Welcome to Maths with Bob. Today we're looking at the flip side of the logarithms. These are the uh, exponentials. These are the uh, inverse functions for the logarithms, if you like. Exponentials and logs are, in fact, reflections about the line y equals x. But what is an exponential? Well, it's a function where the variable is actually uh, as an, is an, in the index, I guess you could say. Um, let's have a look. y equals, uh, say, 2 to the x. Okay, this is a little bit unusual. Usually the variable is not an index, okay? You can see here it's now a power. This is the, the variable is up here now, okay? So 2 to the x is what's called an exponential. I mean, we could actually have 2 to the negative x as well if we wanted to. Uh, this would be, uh, I could put actually a negative sign here. And this affects the graph quite dramatically as well. That turns it into what's called a decay curve. And um, let's actually uh, look what... Uh, what the effect would be is, um, first up, uh, if you have a look at y equals 2 to the x, 2 to the x is this one, this is y equals, say, 2 to the x, uh, going through here at 0, 1, this is the y-axis, so I see this is the x-axis, 0, and that's point 0.1. Now, why does it go through there? Well, um, as you know, uh, if uh, I have 2 to the x value of 0, I get 1. Now, 2 to the negative x, actually, which is what we've got here, uh, is, in fact, decaying. This y equals 2 to the x is a growth curve. So I think we could sort of say this is asymptotic to the x-axis. So we could call this um, decay, if you like. y equals 2 to the minus x. This is the uh, decay curve. And the other one, if you like, is the okay, growth curve. Uh, these are related to what's called exponential growth and decay. Now, you can see here, basically, um, most things in nature follow what's called uh, the exponential function, y equals e to the x. And uh, that's involved in all sorts of things like radioactive decay, when we want to try and carbon date, for instance, bones and things, uh, chemical reactions, uh, go towards um, the equilibriums, uh, in titration type competitions, you might imagine that's, that's why it's quite tricky to do, uh, quite rapidly, uh, and also all sorts of uh, our, some of our internal organs uh, basically use like a, an exponential type of uh, filtration idea. Uh, for instance, alcohol out of our bloodstream and things like that. Okay, so, uh, and also things like anesthetics and things in operations. So um, you can see uh, exponentials play a large part in uh, nature and things around us. Um, I'm just going to rub this out. We're going to have a look at e to the x now. And uh, uh, y is equal to e to the x. This is actually the very famous exponential function. Uh, calculus friendly, you might say. e to the x and ln x, or it looks like an i n, but it's actually an ln logarithm in a period, are in fact the, uh, the two famous uh, calculus friendly uh, exponentials and logarithms. Okay, this one obviously is the same sort of thing. Uh, I'll just quickly show you. If this was, say, 2 to the x, say that was y equals, say, 2 to the x. Okay, um, obviously. Uh, 0 is 1 here. You can see that, uh, obviously, uh, where does e to the x fit into this graph situation? Well, it's actually uh, up here and down under here. So e. Uh, we all hopefully know is uh, irrational. It's about approximately 2.71828. But you can see here the exponential value uh, is just a, well, it's just a constant raised to uh, the variable x again. But um, you can see it's actually quite an important function in uh, calculus, especially. Okay, let's have a look at uh, GeoGebra. Okay, here we have uh, GeoGebra, and you can see here I've actually got. Um, uh, the exponential and the logarithm actually drawn. If you actually have a quick look, uh, this one here, uh, uh, see, yes, this one here is in fact the exponentials. And um, let's try and uh, animate this. If I can actually animate this for you. Um, okay. Okay. Here we have two to the x, three to the x, four to the x. Oops. You guys can see it's moving away <laughs> from my arrow there, but the exponentials are up there. The uh, reflections are the red ones down here, the logarithms, okay. Uh, let's actually just stop that for a second. When it comes down here, I'll just try and uh, turn the animation off. 
round about here. Okay. Now, okay, so that is the arrow is actually pointing to uh, y equals 2 to the x. Now, the red one over here, this one is the reflection, uh, as you can see, in the line y equals x. So this would be y equals, okay, log to the base 2 of x. Okay. And this blue one over here, this one is actually y equals 2 to the x. Okay. And you can see that they, uh, that x is not terribly good, but you can see that these two are reflections in that line y equals x. And y equals x, you can see here, this is a line y equals x coming through the middle here. A dotted line, a dotted purple line, that's y equals x. And you can see they are actually inverse functions of each other. Okay, well, how do we differentiate uh, an exponential function? Now, I'm going to do the one y equals a to the u here, and the derivative is a to the u ln a du dx. But I thought I would just prove this, because we're going to use it a bit uh, in uh, some further, well, obviously differentiation and also integration. So how will we prove this? So if you let uh, y equal a to the u, now you are going to need your logarithms here. So we take the logarithms of both sides, therefore ln y is equal to, okay, ln a to the u. And you know, one of the log laws is I can actually bring this down, u ln a. So this is ln y. Then I'm going to differentiate uh, this whole expression. I'm going to take the derivative with respect to x. Now, if you see on the left-hand side there, d dx of ln y, we can't actually do. So we have to go like this. We have to go d dy. Dy. Uh, okay, L and Y, which we know is one on Y by dy dx. This is the chain rule. Uh, equals okay, d dx of uh, U L N A. Well, that's just d U dx L N A. Okay, we now have that. Well, what's d dy of L N Y? It's just one on Y. So it's just one on Y. Uh, dy dx. Now, dy dx is what we want. Okay, so we need to multiply everything by y in a minute. This is just, you can see here, ln a du dx. So I'll just write that as ln a. Um, okay, let's just write that as, uh, okay, change positions, ln a by du dx. Okay, so we then put the y up. So let's actually put the y up. Okay, multiply both sides by y. Okay, okay, here's y. And what was y? Well, you can see here y was a to the u. So let's actually fix that up too while we're here. This becomes a to the u. Okay, so dy dx, or if you like y dash, is in fact, I'll just rewrite that, y dash is equal to, you can see here, a to the u, uh, ln a, by u dash or du dx, I just write du dx. Okay, where u is any function of x. And this is quite a powerful idea, which we're going to actually utilize shortly. Okay, now once we prove that, let's have a look at a couple of examples here. Uh, these, okay, uh, we have what? y equals 2 to the 5x. Okay, its derivative, y dash, let's, let's follow the rule, is actually, you can see, uh, a to the u, which is just 2 to the 5x, uh, ln 2. Okay, a is 2, by and now du dx, you can see here, u, why is u? Well, hopefully we can see this is actually u, u is actually 5x, and its derivative is just 5, okay, so it's just going to be by 5 here. It's not too bad, I normally could rewrite that as, you know, 5 ln 2, I could just rewrite that as if you like, 5 ln 2 times 2 to the 5x, okay, any order is fine. So this is y dash, or the derivative of 2 to the 5x. Okay, how about y equals 3 to the tan 2x? Okay, well, y dash, you can see here, is again a to the u, so it's 3 to the tan x. Sounds like tan 2x, I should say. Okay, uh, it's now ln what? ln a is 3, so it's ln 3 by, now the derivative of tan 2x, you might remember, is this is the derivative of uh, tan ax, is a sec squared ax, which is just uh, 2 sec squared 
uh, 2x, okay. And you can see this is getting a little bit messy, but uh, we can write this as y dash is equal to what? Uh, 2ln3 6 squared 2x by uh, 3 lots. Well, it's not 3, it's actually 3, the base 3 to the power 10 2x. Okay. All right. Now, I can actually get more sophisticated than this. We can actually. Um, Let's actually do one which has an e in it. So let's how, how would this change if I change this to say the exponential e? So say y is equal to say uh, e to the sine two x. How will we find the root of this? Well, you see the only difference is the ln a now becomes ln e, and ln e is one. So this becomes y dash is equal to what a to the u. In this case, it's e to the sine 2x, so it's e to the sine 2x. Now, I would have a, I'll just write it in, ln e, what's that, ln a, in this case, which is a is e, and then by the derivative of sine 2x, hopefully we know is 2, two sine, is 2 cos, sorry, 2x, well, d sine is cos, okay. And ln e, uh, hopefully uh, you can see here, this value here is actually 1. So ln e is 1. So we get um, a simplified version of this rule, I'll show you shortly, is in fact uh, coming up. So it becomes just, what, 2 cos 2x by e to the sine 2x. Okay, so basically if my, um, if you like, base is e, then the rule simplifies. We don't have any more ln a because ln of e is 1, and it just works out that the, this front part here, uh, that part there, 2 cos 2x, is just the derivative of the power up here. Okay, the derivative of sine 2x is, what, 2 cos 2x, you put it down the front, and you rewrite e to the, in fact, e to the function x. Okay, so let's actually have a look at the simplified version of this rule. Okay, you can see here I've just rewritten the simplified version for, say, if y is equal to e to the function x, then its derivative y dash is f dash x e to the fx, which just means you differentiate that index in the, or power, which was a function x, and it brings, comes down the front now, and you get f dash x to the front, e to the fx. Okay, so let's look at an example, uh, a couple of examples, say uh, y is equal to, say, let's do a simple one, e to the x cubed, okay? Uh, obviously, y dash, just to differentiate, uh, 3x squared, e to the x cubed. That's not too bad. How about y is equal to, say, uh, e to the, uh, let's have a look. Well, we have a, an ln x, for instance. Now, interestingly enough, e, these are inverse functions, and uh, how would we do this? Well, let's actually do it by, you might see what it is, but I'll just, uh, okay, so its derivative would be what? Uh, derivative of uh, uh, ln x, okay, which is just what? Uh, 1 on x, okay, by, okay, um, what is, uh, well, it becomes what? e to the ln x, okay. Now, e to the ln x is just x, so actually uh, its derivative, you'll see here, this becomes like x over x, which is just 1. I'm using the, well, the inverse function of a, of a function, yeah, its own inverse, I guess you could say. Let's actually just do another quick example. Say uh, y is equal to, say, e to the uh, no, x, ln x. Now, this is a little bit more complicated, um, basically because derivative is, uh, okay, uh, okay, is what? It's the derivative d dx of x ln x by e to the x ln x. Now, x ln x is actually a product, so it's the first one, x, by the derivative of ln x, 1 on x, plus the second one, ln x, by the derivative of x, which is just 1, okay, by e to the x ln x. Okay, so you can see here the derivative is just, uh, just 1 plus ln x by e to the x ln x. Okay. All right. Well, well, okay, let's have a look at some product and quotient rules involving the uh, exponentials. Okay, so the first one, you see example one, is x squared e to the 5x plus 2, and 
hopefully you can see that that is actually a product of two functions, okay, uh, this one here, okay, the x squared, and the other one, this is the exponential one, okay, this is the other function here, so we have two functions multiplied together, and as you hopefully remember, you have to use the what's called the product rule to differentiate these, so let's actually apply the product rule, okay, so what is y dash, well, or dy dx if you like, y dash is equal to the first one, x squared, by the derivative of the second one now, which is uh, going, going to be 5, e to the 5x plus 2, now it's plus the second one, uh, which is uh, e to the 5x plus 2, here we are, I'll just rewrite that as e, 5x plus 2, it's a funny looking e, by the uh, derivative of the first one in this case, which is just 2x. And you can see here there's actually a common factor, uh, let's have a look, not only is it e to the 5x plus 2, but there is a common factor of uh, x as well, so, okay, okay, to y dx. Let's actually factor it. Therefore, dy dx is equal to, take out the highest common factor, x dots of e to the 5x plus 2. Now, have a quick look at what's left. Well, there'll be an x from the first term and a 2 from the second term. Okay, all right. All right, so let's go on to example 2. Okay, you can see this is a quotient rule. This is, um, the, well, hopefully you can also can see that this is, okay, we have a function on the top, u. Okay, the function, top function, uh, divided by the bottom function here, you can see here, okay, this now is obviously the division of two functions, and we have to use what's called the quotient rule to differentiate the division of two functions, okay. And it's not as simple as, you know, the, the top derivative uh, over the bottom derivative, okay, it's a very complicated little rule, rem you might remember, okay, it's always, let's actually go through it, okay, it's the bottom function, Okay, which is x cubed plus 2. Now it's now by the derivative of the top function. Okay, and the derivative of that u at the top is 3x squared, so it's going to be a 3x squared e to the x cubed plus 2. Now it's a minus. <coughs> okay, you seem to be running out of room here, but it's minus now the bottom one. Okay, it's, uh, well, it's the top one by the derivative of the bottom one. Okay, so you have to just remember the rule. Okay, so it's now going to be uh, e to the x cubed plus 2 by the derivative, that's the top one, by the derivative of the bottom one, which is just uh, 3x squared, and it's all over, okay, the bottom one squared. Okay. All right, so that is, uh, I'll just quickly rewrite, okay, what was that rule? That was uh, D, dx, you might remember, a u over v was equal to v u dash minus u v dash all over v squared. Okay, that is the equation rule okay, we're using. Okay, so uh, let's actually now try and factor the top. Okay, you can see, well, you've got a, okay, so y dash is equal to, you can see here you've got a 3x squared e to the x cubed plus 2 as a common factor of both those terms. Uh, what's in the brackets? Well, uh, there's an x cubed plus a 2 from the first term, and it's a, it's a minus. Okay, crikey, what is that? Well, it's only a 1, isn't it? Yes, because, okay. Okay, so and then it's still all over uh, x cubed plus 2 all squared, and we can simplify the top again. Uh, y dash is equal to, you can see here, 3x squared e to the x cubed plus 2, and uh, in the brackets, you just have an x cubed plus 1. Uh, it would be nice if that was an x cubed plus a 2. We could probably cancel it with one of the terms in the bottom, but uh, as you can see here, we can't cancel at the moment. We just have to leave it like that. Okay, well, let's move on to the integrals now. Well, okay, let's have a look at the uh, integral rule, which obviously is undoing what differentiation did. So, as long as we've got the function's derivative at the front of the exponential, it'll reform the original exponential e to the function x. So let's actually have a look at some examples. Okay. So say I had uh, the integral of, say, 2x, okay, e to the x squared dx. Okay. Now it's in the right form. You can see that, uh, that uh, 2x is the derivative of x squared, and hence the answer will be just uh, e to the function, which is x squared, plus c. So it's undoing what differentiation did. Now, um, normally, uh, 
if I have to sort of like, let's do another example. Um, say I had just uh, uh, x squared uh, e to the x cubed dx. You can see here I haven't quite got the right derivative at the front. I've got uh, part of it. Uh, it varies by a constant. So if it varies by a constant, uh, I can just do this. I'll put the correct one in. Well, derivative of uh, what x cubed is 3x squared, so I need to put a 3. But I haven't got a 3 there, so I actually multiply it by a third, so that in fact I've now adjusted my integral to the original, back to the original integral, which was the integral of x squared e to the x cubed dx. And I need to just, well, obviously now the 3x squared will form back, but I still have one-third at the front, so it becomes one-third of e to the x cubed plus c. Okay, so um, this is actually applied uh, to like uh, typical ones, and the easy ones are usually things like this, a okay, integral of e to the 5x dx, okay. Now, um, most people remember the rule, you just divide by 5, but if you wanted to, you could say, well, that's really, um, okay, I should have a 5e to the 5x, okay, and that would be uh, good because that would then reform the e to the 5x, but you can see here I need to have a, a one-fifth of the front, and this is why I divide, so we get this general rule, okay, this is the answer to this one, obviously, is just one-fifth of e to the 5x plus c, so this generates like a general rule for the integral of e to the ax, Okay, dx. This is on the table of standard integrals, okay, which is, you can see here, 1 on a e to the ax plus c. Okay, so for general rule for just a constant. Okay, well, uh, let's try some uh, different examples. Okay, let's actually have a quick look at one where we can't do it. Um, okay, so e to the x squared dx. Now, okay. I can't actually integrate this, basically because, okay, the derivative of x squared is 2x. It's not uh, differing by a constant, it's actually differing by a variable and a constant. So, really, uh, okay, we can't do, can't do this one, okay. Obviously, if I just modify it slightly to uh, uh, x e to the x squared dx, I can now do this, right, because my integral uh, so the function's derivative is in fact now uh, just a constant difference from the, uh, if you like, the derivative of x squared. In the case, it would be 2x. So I can just say, I can just now adjust it as long as these are constants. I can just put the 2 in here and a half. You can see here, and this will just give me back, um, okay, a half e to the x squared plus c. Okay, so you can see it's a little bit tricky. You do need to be careful with these ones. Uh, let's have a look at another example. Okay, example five. Say I had um, the integral of e to the, say, 10x here, dx. Now, okay, I can't do it, this one either as it stands, okay? Uh, right? You can't do this one because the derivative of tan, you know, is sex squared. Okay, so let's actually change it uh, slightly. Um, so let's actually just change this. Uh, oops, where's that rubber? Okay, let's just change this slightly, okay, to uh, it's maybe tan 3x, okay, tan 3x. We still can't do this one as it stands, okay, we can't do. Okay, let's actually make it so we can do it, okay. So the first thing is, okay, what's the derivative of tan 3x? Well, it's, as you know, it's 3 sex squared. So let's actually make it just sex squared 3x e to the tan 3x dx. Now, can we do this? Yes, we can, because the derivative of tan 3x is only varies from the, you can see the here, the derivative of the front, uh, 6 squared 3x, by a constant. Okay, so we would still need to adjust it, so let's actually just adjust it. So, really, we'd need a 3 there. That would then reabsorb that 3x squared, uh, or 3, sorry, sorry, 3 sex squared 3x would be reabsorbed into the tan 3x and reform the original exponential e to the tan 3x. But you can see here I need to uh, adjust it slightly. And uh, okay, the answer here obviously would be, okay, uh, let's have a look, one third e to the tan 3x plus c. So you can see here 
we have to sort of undo what the differentiation did. And as you remember, the differentiation actually of an exponential e to the function x threw out what's called the, its derivative function dash x right to the front. And uh, we only can do those if, uh, okay, we can only adjust them as long as there's only a constant involved, not a function. Okay, well, thank you for watching. Bye for now.